we set? Mm -hmm. Roll call. Granat. Here. Jerem. Here. Melton. Here. Pauls. Here. Thompson. Here. Festerson. Here. Mr. President. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for our invocation today by Council Member A.B. Melton. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I know we're, we're all here. We're going to discuss the um, Councilman Thompson, Dr. Thompson, and Councilman Grenant kind of at length in a little bit. But I'd just like to take this time um, to ask God for his blessing on, on these two who have dedicated a lot of time and a lot of years to this city uh, and to their constituents. Um, and so at this time, I just say, God bless the both of you, and God bless the rest of us who are going to be here for another four years. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> An affidavit of publication is on file for the pre-council and city council meeting, and a current copy of the Open Meeting Act is posted in a white binder on the east wall of the legislative chambers. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this meeting of the Omaha City Council. The council thanks you for joining us today. Uh, as a courtesy to those in attendance, we would ask you to turn off or mute any of your electronic devices. As uh, Council Member Melton mentioned, uh, before we begin the, the, uh, the actual agenda for, our, pro for our, our council meeting today, we have several proclamations. And I will say that one of, the, one of the things that Dr. Thompson, one of the last things Dr. Thompson wanted to do before he left uh, was to do a proclamation for the 10 years of service given by the, the uh, Empowerment Network of Omaha. Um, I'll have a few words to say after that as well, but uh, Dr. Thompson and I are going to read up the proclamation. And we would like for any members of the, of the Empowerment Network who would like to make any comments to come to the microphone. But, I will go ahead and start. Uh, the uh, proclamation reads, whereas the Empowerment Network was established in April 2007 with the objectives of building wealth and ownership in the community, preparing our children for the future through quality education, increasing home ownership and revitalizing neighborhoods, and creating strong and healthy families, and whereas the Empowerment Network has a mission of connecting, communicating, and collaborating with residents, leaders, and organizations to create positive change. And whereas the Empowerment Network seeks to close long-standing economic gaps that have been exacerbated by racial and geographical segregation, and whereas the Empowerment Network is working together to transform Omaha into a healthy, wealthy, thriving, and prosperous city regardless of neighborhood and whereas the empowerment network has achieved positive outcomes through collaboration in areas of education employment entrepreneurship violence prevention justice arts culture and housing revitalization now and therefore we the city council of the city of omaha do hereby recognize the 10th anniversary of the establishment of the empowerment network as well as recognizing its organizational partners and the residents who have played a role in making Omaha a great city. In witness whereof we have set our hand and caused the official seal of the city of Omaha to be affixed this 23rd day of May, 2017. Congratulations to the Empowerment Network. Ten years. Uh, appreciate. Uh, first of all, let me do this. Uh, this is really a collaboration. Uh, we have been working Name with. Name it just for the record, please. I was wondering if I needed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Barney, uh, 12333 Cumming Street, also 105 North 31st Street with the Empowerment Network. 
Um, I'd like, if it's okay, to ask some of our partners that are here, if you would please stand, those that have been working with us, some of them 10 years, if you would please stand, Empowerment Network, participants, partners, organizational folks that are here with us. Um, I just want to recognize them, um, and yes, <laughs> and thank you so much for being here. Uh, we just want to, first of all, thank this council. Uh, 10 years ago, uh, Councilman Gray and others, uh, Councilman Gannett, Franklin Thompson, um, Pete, um, have been working with us collectively, uh, specifically on working to address unemployment. Uh, we appreciate the support of this council, first of all, of approving the North Omaha Village Zone Revitalization Plan. This council approved it unanimously. You have approved uh, investments in Heart Workforce Solutions and Step Up. You've approved uh, demolition and rehabilitation of homes in North Omaha, in South Omaha, and around the city. Uh, we look forward to working with those that will be here uh, on the board, but we also want to say uh, congratulations and thank you, Councilman Grenat. Thank you for your support, uh, not only with Step Up, but being a big supporter of the revitalization plans that have moved forward. Uh, thank you for being an active participant, and thank you for challenging us to continue to press forward that we include not only the North, but South Omaha in the strategies. We appreciate the involvement uh, in the transformation plan. Uh, Councilman, uh, we thank you for the work that you've been alongside with us with the Transformation 2025, with Step Up, um, and many other initiatives, being a strategic partner uh, and looking at how do we drive this whole city forward. We stand ready. Uh, we're ready for the next phase, uh, the next 10, and we believe the next 10 will be even greater than the last 10, and that we will truly close the gaps in our community, and we will make this a great city in every zip code. So thank you so much for this proclamation on behalf of the Empowerment Network Board and of all of our partners. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. Festus. Thanks, Mr. President. I also just wanted to add my congratulations on 10 years, and I uh, had the pleasure of attending the uh, 10th anniversary sessions and the luncheon, and just wanted to comment that uh, it was a fantastic day. And um, one might think after all this work, and it is a lot of work, that uh, an organization might be getting a little tired or starting to drag a little bit, but I can tell you the energy in the room was fantastic. Uh, the continuity you've had in your staff and your partners, I think, is testament also to the success we're having and to the mission. Uh, and I know that I speak for everyone on this council when we say well, we do look forward to the next 10 years and think you're making a real difference, and we look forward to being your ongoing partner in that venture. Thanks. Dr. Thompson. Yes, I'd like to uh, address my colleagues that are out in greater Omaha. Um, I know that there have been many programs in the past that have failed and I know that there have been programs where uh, money has been funneled to those issues to those uh, uh, programs and perhaps it wasn't spent well and but I like to say that I, I believe that the empowerment network is different and I believe that this is one that we're going to have to get behind now if you if those of you who weren't at the 10th annual um, celebration one of the themes that kept coming up over and over and over again from people outside of Nebraska was that you don't know what you have here. There are countless other cities who would love to come and copy what you're doing with the network. And sometimes when you're, Willie, when you're on the inside, you don't quite see everything. What well, somebody on the outside comes and tells you you're, you're light years ahead of other cities. And so I, I want to ask you guys, don't, do, don't get weary in well-doing, but uh, I want to ask my colleagues in larger TV land that you've got to get behind this effort. Sometimes the city is able to give money and sometimes they're not. Uh, hopefully the city can give more money the next time around, but we need uh, private partners to step up and get behind this effort because it really is working. And, um, Nobody asked me to say this. I usually don't give commercial type speeches, but um, I, I really believe that we have something good here. It, it, it is working, and we can even improve upon it better. And so uh, as I'm leaving office, I'd like to put a very big stamp of approval on what the Empowerment Network is doing, what they can still do, but it will cost money. And then the last thing that I'll say is that I'm, I'm proud of uh, Willie accepting my personal challenge. I've always said that the, that the truth does not lie in the political left or the right. It lies somewhere in what we call the critical middle. 
the critical middle is hard to find in America. But uh, I am proud that Willie, you've accepted a challenge to make sure that your efforts will include self-reliance. Black people will not make it in America until we embrace self-reliance. That's not a new topic. That's, that's something that people like Frederick Douglass and Malcolm X embraced. And thank you, sir, for not only uh, bringing in the traditional liberal type of, of philosophy, but you're mixing it with conservative views that black people used to have a long time ago and we curiously forgot about it. But thank you for, for accepting uh, in, as part of your program the need for us to be self-reliant. And because of that, because of that vision, because of your critical middle, then you have a lifetime supporter in me. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Um, we have, uh, with the Empowerment Network, I, let me just say, you know, very quickly, the, the, the amount of collaboration and the amount of work that has been done by the Empowerment Network is amazing. Uh, I have to tell you all a, a, a rather funny story. Um, <clears throat> when Willie Barney first came to me, uh, and uh, I was one of the first people he came to to ask about, you know, starting this organization and working to make a difference and so forth, and I told Willie that, um, okay, I will, uh, I'll, I'll be glad to advise you, but I won't be around very much, and uh, I'm not going to be doing very much with the with the Empowerment Network, and I and I, I wish you guys a lot of luck, and I hope that you will eventually do well. <clears throat> I don't think I've missed a day or missed a meeting since I was first asked. Uh, they all, uh, they were also asking me about running for city council, and I thought they were all out of their minds which goes to show how much I know. Uh, but thank you, for, uh, thank you for the work that you all continue to do, and, and thank you for uh, allowing me to be a part of this great effort. This is one of the greatest efforts this city has seen, and, and uh, I look nothing, I, I, I see nothing but really great things in the next 10 years, so very much appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, we have a couple of other proclamations that we would like to read up today because we have two two members of our council that are going to be leaving us. This is going to be their last meeting. Uh, and so what we're going to do is read a proclamation for them. Uh, we're going to start with uh, Ms. Melton, who is going to read the proclamation for Dr. Thompson. And then our council vice president is going to read the proclamation for Gary Gurnett. After uh, Ms. Melton reads her comments, uh, reads the proclamation, Dr. Thompson will make some comments. After uh, Chris Jerem reads uh, hit the proclamation for Gary Gurnett, Gary will make some comments, and then we, we may all want to have something to say after that. But I think a lot of it was said during lunch, and what stays, what start, what happens at lunch needs to stay at lunch. So, <laughs> uh, Ms. Melton. Thank you. Whereas Dr. Franklin Thompson was first elected to represent District 6 in the Omaha City Council in 2001, and whereas he was subsequently re-elected in 2005, 2009, and 2013. And whereas Dr. Thompson served as Vice President of the City Council from 2009 to 2011, and whereas during his years representing District 6, Dr. Thompson has served as a tireless advocate for neighborhood issues and concerns. And whereas Dr. Thompson has advocated government efficiency, accessibility, and process improvement while representing his district. And whereas Dr. Thompson has worked tirelessly with the Elkhorn community and championed the Elkhorn Business Improvement District and downtown Elkhorn streetscape. And whereas as a profess professional educator, Dr. Thompson is keenly aware of the great impact of literacy and libraries and has been a friend to the library system, in particular the Swanson branch, while serving on the city council. And whereas Dr. Thompson has served on the Police and Fire Retirement System Board since 2013, while also serving on various city council committees throughout his tenure. And whereas Dr. Thompson has always embodied a bipartisan approach to governing and a focus on the bigger picture. And whereas in his retirement, Dr. Thompson will be able to spend more time with his wife Beverly, four children, and six grandchildren. Now, therefore, the Omaha City Council recognizes Dr. Franklin Thompson's years of advocacy and service to his constituents in District 6 
and the city of Omaha as a whole. So in witness whereof, we have set our hands and caused the official seal of the city of Omaha to be affixed on this 23rd day of May, 2017. Okay, um, thank you, uh, colleagues, for um, uh, all that we've been through. Um, yes, it, sometimes it has been rough, and at times it hasn't been fair, but it's always been good. And taking a page from the Bible, I b just believe that uh, all things work together for them who love God and are called. And so it doesn't matter whether the times were, were good or bad. Uh, everything that's happened over the last 16 years has made me a better person, and you've been a part of that. And as, as a result of me being with you and working through these hard issues uh, in the city, uh, I've become a better individual. And so I have not, nothing to look back on, and uh, it's, all been, it's all been good. I do want to um, uh, say that um, um, my wife would be here today, but she has a, a very, very special a doctor's appointment that uh, it could not be rearranged. If you rearranged it, it would have been another two months, and so that's the only reason why Beverly's not here. But she sends her love and her gratitude also. Um, I wanted to give you guys a gift, and um, um, those of you who know me know that I have an alter ego. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I think um, I think Willie Barney was a little bit surprised just uh, Sunday when he was watching me dance to No Bounce to the Ounce. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so uh, music is a, a big part of, of, of my, um, uh, what I do. It, it, I use it not to make a living, but to teach. So I, I have a new music CD that I'm just releasing, and it's entitled Freedom Fighter. And if you would allow me, I'd like to give that each one of you a copy of that as my going away present. Uh, it shows me when I when I was younger and I had an afro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you can see, I <laughs> don't quite look like this today. <laughs> but um, the entire album has to do with um, social justice and, and, and uh, civil rights. And that's kind of how I want to I be remembered. Uh, and I know all Republicans don't value that, but I do. And uh, one of the things that I want to do going forth is to try and see if I can get the Republican Party to go back to their original roots. Oh, I don't have time enough for that one. But anyway, <laughs> um, so anyway, I want to uh, leave that as my, my legacy. Thank you, Doc. And then a special thank you to my friend to my left, Amy. Amy has uh, been a special friend in that uh, not only are we professional colleagues, but we lean on each other and cry on each other's shoulders. And she's been like a sister to me. And I just thank you for always being there for me when I needed you. Thank you. Thank you. You and I will be touching base when the Huskers and Buckeyes play again, too, by the way. <laughs> the, this, this coming year? This coming year. Revenge. Revenge. <laughs> Mr. Vice President. Yes. Whereas Gary Grenant was first elected to represent City Council District 4 in 2001 and has faithfully served that office for the past 16 years. And whereas Gary served as City Council President from 2009 through 2011 and was twice selected as City Council Vice President 
And whereas Gary is proud to have lived his entire life in South Omaha, attending and graduating from Omaha South High School and earning a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Nebraska Omaha. And whereas in addition to his role as a council member for District 4, Gary served South Omaha through active participation in the Deer Park Neighborhood Association, South Omaha Neighborhood Alliance, the South Omaha Business Association, the South Omaha Environmental Task Force, the South Omaha Chamber of Commerce Redevelopment Committee, the South Omaha Optimist Club, the Q Merchants Association, and assists with the Deer Park Citizens Patrol. And whereas during Gary's tenure, he achieved support for and helped to carry out a streetscape improvement project for the South 24th Street Business District which just last year was awarded the prestigious Great Places in America Streets Award from the American Planning Association. And whereas Gary was instrumental in establishing and implementing the City of Omaha's graffiti abatement program in 2012, which now includes two graffiti abatement vans and numerous graffiti removal kits utilized by local neighborhood associations. And Whereas prior to being elected to the City of Omaha City Council, Gary served as a member of the United States Marine Corps and then spent three decades as an Omaha police officer, retiring as a police sergeant in 2000. And whereas Gary's final meeting as the representative of the City Council District 4 is May 23, 2017. Now therefore, the Omaha City Council recognizes Gary Gurnant, a proud South Omaha boy, AKA SOB <laughs> for his dedication and service to the community. In witness whereof, we have set our hands and caused the official seal of the City of Omaha to be affixed on this 23rd day of May 2017. The floor is yours. I can say one thing being an SOB was one of the nicest things that I was called. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love my country and I love my city. The last 51 years of public service. It's just been incredible with peaks and valleys, happiness and sadness, making new friends, losing some close ones. I could go on, but I'll spare you the listening energy. I would like to thank my mom and dad for igniting the pilot light of my public service and being there in spirit, especially when the times got rough. I'd be in deep doo-doo if I didn't thank Cindy Workman and Carlos Castillo for all their hard work in 2001 when this chapter began. And Carlos, if you're watching, I know I'm the one and only Democrat you'll ever manage. <laughs> My accountant for 16 years, Tom Reyes, you the man. <laughs> kept me within the boundaries. And of course, to all my supporters, thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing me to serve all these years. And to my non-supporters, thank you as well for making my service even stronger. I would like to single out my listening post folks and give them a hearty thanks for being the steady eyes and ears and elected official needs out in the community for feedback, ideas, consensus building, and most importantly, criticism. Most of you will probably remember the voters in 2001 ousted a mayor 
and five city council members. The first marching order was to restore civility to City Hall, and that mayor and that city council did just that. And I'm proud to have been part of that team. And I'm even prouder that we've been able to maintain that civility for the last 16 years, for the most part. <laughs> I started with a crumbling foundation in District 4, but the community and government working very hard together, and the we factor was born. We reversed disinvestment in South Omaha, we rehabbed all South Omaha parks. We got a new library, and a community college came along for the ride. <laughs> the Salvation Army built the Croc Community Center in South Omaha. We improved our connection with all first responders, and we kicked some serious butt against graffiti. And those are just a few, folks, because we're not done yet. My replacement, Mr. Palermo, will have a solid foundation to continue building a brighter future for District 4. Now you might be asking yourselves, well, what are you going to do? Knowing how the system is supposed to work and having these years of problem solving under my belt, I thought it'd be fun to become the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. President, thank you, and I believe we have the people's business to conduct. Yes, we do. We have one, one other commenter, and then we're going to go. Mr. Festus. Thanks, Mr. President. Yeah, you guys aren't getting off that easy. I think there's some more comments yet uh, amongst council members, and we mostly did talk about it uh, earlier today during our lunch, which was great. But I just wanted to add a few words, too, and, and say 16 years, that's an awful long time to be in public service. In fact, that was before we had paved roads, right? <laughs> we, st we, still have some, reclaimed, I think. we still have some unpaved roads. <laughs> but I'll date myself, you know, cue the A's joke, right, that I always tease, tease Gary about. But um, I'll age myself a little bit, too, and that I was, I was part of that change, too, that came in 2001 as a deputy chief of staff to the mayor, working with Franklin and Gary in that role, and always appreciated our interactions in that, in that respect, too. And it seems these days that Folks oftentimes think longevity is a bad thing in, in public service, uh, but I would say these two are examples of the total opposite. Uh, and in my view, it's testament to the service they provided to their constituents and to the city um, that experience matters. And I think their constituents recognize that and reelected them four times, which is no easy, easy fit uh, and is a lot of work. I think much more work than most people realize in terms of the time it takes to do this job and your regular jobs let alone campaigns. So that was a very big commitment over the last 16 years. And I think we all benefited not only from your experience uh, here at City Hall, but your personal experience as well as a professor and as a former police officer. I think we all benefited from that as policymakers too. So I wanted to point that out and just say that I've always respected uh, your service and your long-term um, um, things you've done for the city and all your accomplishments. Look forward to staying in touch with you in the future and thank you for all you've done for our city. Ms. Melton. Thank you. Um, and, and I know I want to say all the same things that, that Councilman uh, Festerson just said, that this, this can be tough, and it can be tough on your personal life and on your family, and, and certainly it's tough when you, when you have another job that, that you're working. Um, but I appreciate that all the time that both of you um, have given to the city of Omaha and to your constituents. And I know... Um, Dr. Tom Thompson, I should have caught this. You've ha you've eight grandchildren, not six. I can catch the typo on our on our thing here. So, I know that you're not necessarily retiring because you're going to continue to teach. Um, hopefully, you will have more time to spend with your eight grandchildren. Um, but I do appreciate uh, everything that you have taught me, not just your students, but I have learned a lot um, over the last four years, and I really appreciate that. I remember sitting in your office when I was contemplating a run for, for city council, of course, I make an appointment to go see Dr. Thompson. And I met him on a Saturday morning. I did bring him Starbucks. It might have been scooters. Starbucks. Starbucks, yes. I, <laughs> and, and I did br bring him a little, little um, to hopefully we can talk. And he said, yes, I have basically, I have like 45 minutes to an hour. I'm very busy 
And two hours later, after he grilled me and, <laughs> and asked me every question and then asked me to explain my answers, um, we were friends. Um, we were good friends. And so thank you very much for not only the time you've given to the city, but the time that um, you've given to me. And I'll never forget what you've done. Thank you. I have one other order of business, and then we'll, we'll get to our agenda. And that is to... Uh, to uh, recognize as well that we have another uh, gentleman who is going to be retiring uh, here June 2nd. He is currently our planning director. His name is Jim Thiel, James Thiel, who will be retiring June 2nd. And um, Jim's been here, oh God, I don't, he, I, I remember my early days were your early days. <laughs> so uh, Jim, congratulations and, and, and good luck in your retirement. And uh, Jim, we wanted to have you make any comments that you would like to make as well. But, uh, thank you, uh, uh, James Thiel of City Planning Department. Uh, uh, ben, uh, I think we had uh, less gray in our hair those A lot. days, didn't we? <laughs> uh, uh, I guess I have worked in Omaha since 1979, all of it in some way involved with uh, planning or community development. So. I've been around a while. I've seen a lot of things, uh, uh, both good, a few things that I wasn't happy about, but overall it, I think we've made a great progress in, in Omaha throughout the past uh, past decades. I think uh, when, when you look back at uh, first came to Omaha, the downtown was uh, just uh, barely starting to revive and look at what we have now. When I look at some of the neighborhoods in North and South Omaha, We've made some progress in some of those neighborhoods. Yes, we've had some uh, setbacks in other areas, but overall, we've made progress. And it's because of the citizens as well as the city council and the mayors that I've worked with that we've been able to make that progress. I do want to express my uh, uh, sincere uh, uh, gratitude uh, for this council as well as the other council that have uh, preceded it. I'm not sure the public understands uh, what all you go through, the amount of time that you spend uh, working uh, on the city's behalf, and I very much appreciate that, and I appreciate your friendship. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. And everybody else is staying put. <laughs> Madam Clerk. Pursuant to City Council Rule 7H, due to no meeting being held May 30th, 2017, agenda items 7 and 8 shall be laid over three weeks to June 13th, 2017. Pursuant to City Council Rule 7E, agenda item number 9 shall be laid over two weeks for publication and public hearing. Item 10, an application to approve a Class C liquor license for Asteria Segreto, LLC, doing business as Asteria Segreto, 3910 Farnham Street, Suite B. Public hearing on agenda item number 10 is today. Proponents, please. So my name is Sean. Street. Appearing today on behalf of the applicant, this is the latest addition to the Blackstone District, 39th and Farnham, approximately 1,000 square feet. Be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Motion approved. Moved and seconded to approve item 10. No lights. Roll call. Grenat. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Paul. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 10 approved, 7 to 0. Item 11, an application to approve a Class I liquor license for DJ's QSR of Kansas, Inc., doing business as Spin Neapolitan Pizza, 17520 Wright Street, Suite 1. Public hearing agenda item number 11 is today. Proponents, please. <coughs> Brian Adams, 17520 Wright Street for Spin Neapolitan Pizza. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Second. Moved and seconded to approve item 11. No lights. Roll call. Garnett. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Paul. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 11 approved, 7 to 0. 
Item 12, an application to approve an addition to premises application for MAR LLC doing business as Lot 2 Restaurant and Wine Bar, 6207 Maple Street for their Class C liquor license for an area to add an area approximately 14 feet by 40 feet to the west. Public hearing on agenda item number 12 is today. Proponents, please. Yes, uh, my name is Brad Marr, uh, 5831 Burdett Street. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Mr. Festerson. Thanks, Mr. President. I just want to recognize Brad here for a minute as a member of the Benson Business Improvement District. He's been doing a great job on there for us and for Benson. And also to recognize um, Lot 2 as one of our best restaurants in town. Uh, so I want to give you a chance to explain what you're doing here. You're expanding to the west and uh, acquiring some new space, right? Yeah, so um, uh, unfortunately the, the biggest challenge for growth has been our size. So we've been able to uh, accommodate that with this new space, which is uh, really great for us and for the neighborhood. And it'll be uh, accommodating uh, private dining and uh, wine tasting classes, um, you know, special events, things like that. So Great. And when do you expect to be open? Well, we got our CEO approved uh, this morning, so um, as soon as we can. Great. Yeah. We look forward to seeing it and wish you success and uh, move to approve. Exactly. Moved and seconded to approve item 12. No further lights. Roll call. Garnett. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Paul. Thompson. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 12 approved, 7 to 0. Item 13, a request to approve a manager application for Dustin S. Morrison for High Tides of Omaha, LLC, doing business as Cheeseburger in Paradise, 17304 Davenport Street for their Class I liquor license. Public hearing on agenda item number 13 is today. Proponents, please. Thank you, sir. My name is Dustin Morrison, 23402 Denton Street in Waterloo, and I'm here with Cheeseburger in Paradise. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? <coughs> Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Thank Seeing you. none, the public hearing is closed. Moved to approve. Moved and seconded to approve item 13. No lights. Roll call. Grenat. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Paul. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 13 approved, 7 to 0. Item 14, a request to approve manager applications for Ray Anderson, Inc., doing business as Anderson Amico Food Shop to appoint Raymond D. Anderson III as manager of the following present Class D liquor license locations, 15635 West Dodge Road and 2630 South 140th Street. Public hearing on agenda item number 14 is today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon. Ray Anderson, 17605 Riggs Street. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Moved to approval. Second. Moved and seconded to approve item 14. No lights. Roll call. Grenat. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Paul. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 14 approved, 7 to 0. Thank you. Item 15, a request to approve manager applications for Quick Shop Inc. to appoint Megan E. Kelly as manager of the following present Class D liquor license locations, Quick Shop 652-3222 Q Street and Quick Shop 667-4855 L Street. Public hearing on agenda item number 15 is today. Proponents, please. Megan Kelly, 8512 Soda Drive, Bellevue. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Second. Moved and seconded to approve item 15. No lights, roll call. Grenat. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 15 approved, 7 to 0. Item 16, a request to approve manager applications for Quick Shop Inc. to appoint June E. Larmer, manager of the following present Class D liquor license locations. Quick Shop 622-9545 Q Street, Quick Shop 623-3103 North 204th Street, Quick Shop 660-9606 F Street, Quick Shop 665-15556 Blondo Street, and Quick Shop 668-6845 South 167th Street. Public hearing on agenda item number 16 is today. Proponents, please. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, June Larmer, 10665 Charles Plaza, Omaha. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. 
Second. Moved and seconded to approve item 16. No lights. Roll call. Garnett. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Thompson. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 16 approved. Seven to zero. Item 17, a request to approve an entertainment district permit for the Capital District located at the northwest corner of 10th Street and Capitol Avenue. The applicant is the Capital District Landowners Association, 1111 North 13th Street, Suite 101. Public hearing on agenda item number 17 is today. Proponents, please. Yes, Mr. President, members of the Council, Larry Jobin, 11440 West Center Road, appearing on behalf of the applicant. Before I go into the entertainment district at the uh, Capital District, I did want to uh, recognize both Franklin and uh, Gary for their service. I really appreciate working with both of you over the last 16 years and getting to know you. I always found both of you very willing to listen and meet and discuss issues and I always found you both fair in your approach and solution oriented and coming from this side of the podium that's all you can really ask for so I do appreciate both of you and you'll be missed. So with that we'll get into the Capital District Entertainment District. This is the first of its kind in the city of Omaha. Uh, there's really only one other entertainment district that I know of in the state of Nebraska, which is in Lincoln and uh, called The Yard. Um, so most of you are aware of that. Um, the applicant is the Capital District Landowners Association, and this is the promotional association that's referenced in the uh, entertainment district ordinance. And the reason why we have this promotional association as opposed to a specific applicant is because these various buildings and properties that surround the common area. I think we have to we'll go from the top down. Um, these, these various buildings that surround the common area are owned by different entities. Um, and so we, um, as part of the entertainment district ordinance, we've been working with the police department, the fire department, um, the law department, of course, in the city of Omaha, and then, of course, the law committee to um, kind of vet through the um, security issues and safety issues uh, to make sure that this is a safe environment, that it's well run. Um, this is the site plan, and then I'll talk a little bit about the rules and regulations that we've developed. And uh, we developed them in part looking at what a number of other entertainment districts have done around the country. And so we revised and revised and revised them until we think we came up with something that's going to work very well. So uh, this is a, a drawing showing the capital district in which you can't see necessarily I guess what's shaded here is the uh, common area itself and here's 12th Street and here's Capitol Avenue the hotel building is here uh, then there's an, another future building here another future building here these are the apartments these are the apartments this is going to be the retail building that's going to be constructed and of course the hotel on this side and then the parking garage on the other side of Davenport Street, which has been vacated. Um, it, it calls for some six feet height fencing along Davenport on this side of the uh, Capital District, primarily just to make sure people uh, that, that that side uh, is relatively unmanned and, and not close to the common area that it's secure. So there's a six foot high fence back here. Here's some screening fencing. And then most of it is this 43 inch temporary security barriers and they're shown throughout the common areas and the, and the reason why they're temporary is they're movable so you can you can contract and expand the common areas uh, depending on what the event is uh, within the common area and so the idea of course is that you can buy a drink at one location or one restaurant or bar and walk freely through the common area to the, ne the next restaurant or bar um, so I don't know you're familiar with how those uh, operate in Kansas City, for example, or in uh, Lincoln. But the idea is, of course, to, to make sure that um, everything operates um, uh, correctly, safely. Uh, there's a surveillance plan. There's cameras. Uh, on larger events, there'll actually be uh, security personnel uh, stationed at various uh, parts of the common area to make sure that people aren't jumping the fence, making sure that people are of age uh, drinking. And uh, and so this is where the common area is. Uh, we did, again, develop a number of rules, and uh, the rules, I think, are part of your packet. Just briefly, we broke them down into operating policies and procedures. Uh, then there's this uh, whole container and wristband, wristband requirements. 
And then, of course, there's uh, rules and regulations regarding outdoor music events and live entertainment. And then there's a guest code of conduct, and then there's a dress code. And these rules and regulations, of course, were designed to provide a very safe, fun environment for the people that are enjoying the common area within the Capital District. Uh, we did limit the uh, outdoor music to end at 1 o'clock on the weekends, or actually every day, but there's probably very few nights that it won't be just the weekends. Uh, and, and so there's a number of other rules and regulations we can get into as much as that as you want, but um, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Hello, I'm Jeffrey Scott Linder, R-E-Y, Linder, L-I-N-D-E-R-E-R. -E -R. We've got a copy of my testimony. Give it to the clerk. To clerk. Give it to the clerk. I'll hear it, do it, please. Thank you. Give her a chance to pass those out real quick. Address, please. 11620 MSM Mike Circle. You can go ahead. We'll get those in, okay. in just a second. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Omaha City Council members and those in attendance today. My name is Scott Linder, and I'm the new executive director for Project Extra Mile, a network of community partnerships across the state working to prevent alcohol related harm. I'm here to deliver testimony on the proposal of the Capital District Entertainment District. As you know, Project Extra Mile testified before the Council in opposition to the creation of these entertainment districts back in January. Nebraska has a well-established problem with excessive alcohol consumption. Entertainment districts, including the proposal before you today, only serve to further exasperate the problem. Nebraska is currently the eighth worst binge drinking state and excessive drinking state in the nation. Furthermore, Omaha has been identified by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention as the 15th worst binge drinking state in the United States. Our state experiences an average of 436 alcohol attributable deaths each year, and it costs our state economy $1.16 billion in 2010 alone. During our testimony in January, we cited our concerns about the increased alcohol-related harms that have been proven to result from increasing alcohol availability such as underage drinking and increased likelihood of assaults, disturbances, and nuisances. In addition to the lack of attention given to the need for increased law enforcement in the areas where these districts may be located. And while some locations may not have yet seen the unfortunate consequences of having these districts, numerous others across the country have. Unfortunately, these concerns have not been fully addressed in the Capital District application. The overarching concern remains how to minimize alcohol-related problems. Through appropriate parameters and limitations of such a district, whether this <coughs> excuse me, area or future areas while providing needed ability to enforce current laws and city ordinances. Parameters and limitations should be limited, should be determined prior to granting the permit while enforcement of the laws and ordinances is ongoing, critical, and needs to be very specifically delineated. A significant downfall at base value is the lack of accountability by one entity for potential harm, including overservice of alcohol and sales to underage persons. Our laws and ordinances cannot be left to be enforced by a hired security team. That duty falls squarely on the city, and we should encourage and support all the e efforts to create a formalized plan for the such enforcement. In an effort to provide clarity for our recommendations and suggestions for the changes to the current proposal, We've arranged suggestions under the headings contained in the proposal. Under operating policies and procedures, under number one, tenants shall at all times remain responsible for any alcoholic beverages leaving their premise as defined in their lease um, in the Liquor Control Act. Number two, neither the association nor the tenant will not have the ability to police or enforce whether alcohol is consumed within the common areas. This is purely a law enforcement function and our police department should be given the resources to adequately enforce where alcohol is consumed according to state statute and city ordinance. Security companies are not held to the same standards of training or knowledge of laws, regulations, or rules. Number three, again, the issue is who's responsible for enforcing laws. Legal requirements is an important distinction. When the sale of alcohol is at play, the liquor license establishment should always be responsible for enforcing all such legal requirements for that sale. 
Number four, the hours of potential sale of alcohol noted on the application at 6 a.m. until 2 a.m. We would recommend the council considering shortening the time of availability of alcohol in order to reduce both any alcohol-related harms and the potential for substantial law enforcement needed. Number five, it's important to distinguish this fact here. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, number six, alcohol should never be sold below wholesaler costs and the association should not be allowed any decision regarding price of alcohol. Reduced price is one factor that provides great avail availability of alcohol and leads to increased alcohol related problems in communities. Number seven, again important to distinct, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, number nine, while providing a requirement that a tenant's logo be placed on the alcohol beverage container, <coughs> The proposal distinguishes between tenants and licensees. When alcohol is served, a liquor licensee should at all times be responsible for the sale and service of alcohol from its location. It would be responsible for the sale and service of alcohol from its location. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it would be most important to tie the alcohol to a specific liquor license, so we would suggest affixing the logo of the alcohol retailer responsible for the sale of that alcohol. Number 10, allowing food service outside the district area will provide a dangerous potential for alcohol being taken outside the area as well. Number 13, it would be problematic for the association to provide permission for temporary bar stations and drinks, drink troughs that are intended for alcohol. This should be an issue request brought back to the council for additional public input, discussion, and approval. 14, closing a street, uh, Davenport in this instance, for increased pub public pedestrian and traffic use will increase the need for enforcement and should be included in any larger enforcement plan with adequate resources provided to the police department. Under the section of container and wristband requirements, number one, cups containing beer should be no larger than 12 ounces, 16 ounces at the most. Hard liquor should be limited to 1.5 ounces per drink. Cups should contain the logo of the specific liquor license holder's logo for adequate accountability and enforcement investigations. Number four, wristbands should be a plastic, semi non removable nature that would require um, scissors and would discourage transforming a such wristband from, say, a 21 year old to his 19 year old friend. Uh, five, wine service should be kept proportional to the strength of alcohol. A standard wine drink is five to six ounces, and the proposal was a whole bottle of wine. Uh, six, Shots should be forbidden outside an established liquor license premise. If I can, if I can get you to kind of wrap up a little bit, we can read the rest of it if you like, because you've got it all written here. Okay, sure. There's just a couple more on here. Uh, four, security companies will not have the same ability, liability, nor responsibility as will law enforcement for these events. It's imperative that the city will have identified enforcement plan for such events and the necessary enforcement resources available. Uh, GIST code of conduct, it's a potential risk for underage youth to access alcohol to allow a 21-year-old to serve as a guardian for purposes herein. And 22, the last one, accidents, injuries, and security-related incidents may warrant law enforcement involvement and should be readily available um, and require reporting. Um, in closing, we would respectfully ask the council to give uh, strong and thoughtful consideration uh, to our comments and recommendations. We believe we share a concern to ensure that we reasonable safeguards are put in place and to prevent excessive alcohol consumption and the related harms. Thank you. Are there any other opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing another public hearing is closed, uh, Dr. Thompson. Uh, yes, uh, Larry. Go ahead and identify yourself again. Yes, uh, Larry Jobin, 11440 Western Road. I, I had just a couple of questions, but did sure. you want to, did you want to provide uh, comments to what you just heard? Well, I, I guess what I would say about that is that the Capital District is a significant investment in that entire area. I think it's about $250 million investment. The people that have invested in the Capital District have a very, very strong interest in making sure that this is run uh, efficiently, safely, and uh, so I, I think we've vetted all these various issues and concerns with the fire department, the police department. Of course, the police department has access in the event that there's need for access, and, and as well as the fire department as well. When there are larger events, there will be uh, security personnel. There's, of course, a whole surveillance plan with uh, cameras and such that are in place. Uh, we think that uh, we really vetted all these issues out, and we think that everything's been addressed 
uh, adequately. The other thing I would point out is I think under the, uh, if I recall, under the Entertainment District Ordinance itself, this license is for two years, so every two years we revisit uh, what's going on at the Capital District. If and, and look, we told the police department when we met with them that we would continually update our rules and regulations if need be. Um, so we're open to suggestions if things aren't working the way they're supposed to be working. So this, this, these sets of rules and regulations are really a living and breathing document that will be modified from time to time to take into consideration things that are not going well. If, if that's in fact the case, we don't think that will be the case. We spent a lot of time putting these together, a lot of time meeting, I think we met with the police department, fire department several on several occasions. Uh, we went back and forth with the law department on these rules and regulations and the site plan numerous, numerous times. So I think we've really vetted those issues and I feel very confident and comfortable that we've done all we can at this stage in the game. One specific question that was uh, brought up was the whole idea or concept of an adult buying a band and then switching it to a, uh, a minor. Have, have that, has that been addressed? Well, obviously that would be a violation of the rules and regulations and they'd be asked to leave uh, mm -hmm. the premises. I mean, that, that is exactly why there'll be security personnel watching for that kind of thing. Yes, the, the wristbands are required and that's under, um, if you look at the rules and regulations on page three, there's um, a whole container and wristband requirement area. Um, and, and the other thing I would point out also is this is just the entertainment district, the common area, as far as this applicant today. Each individual applicant that gets a liquor license at their particular establishment, so you'll have a Class C with an ED designation on the end of it, which means it's a Class C liquor license with an entertainment district designation. The reason why you require their logos or their names or some other identifiable mark on their cups is that they're ultimately responsible for any violation of the liquor laws. Mm -hmm. And so the liquor commission and the police department have the ability to enforce the liquor laws against each individual tenant mm -hmm. based upon that fact. And, and so each bar and restaurant is going to need to make sure that they're not serving alcohol mm -hmm. to minors. Uh, we think that this uh, wristband concept works. Uh, I think the police department was comfortable with that. I think the law department was comfortable that w with that in our rules and regulations as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, do things happen? I suppose where, where there's a will, there's a way, but there's certainly uh, a strong interest to make sure that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. I've, I've said for long, uh, for a long time, I've said that uh, we need to be able to compete with our sister cities and in particular places like uh, Beale Street in Memphis. And without, without this concept that you're trying to push, we're, we're just not going to be able to compete. Uh, and I, I believe we have to compete in a way to where we don't open the, f the floodgates and then all kinds of crazy things will happen, but we do have to be able to complete with, compete with our neighbors just 50 miles down the road and uh, so I, I applaud what you're doing, and, and I'm hoping that, that uh, ultimately it could be, uh, uh, it, it can expand a little bit. But I do like the approach that every two years you have to come back. It's a living, breathing thing that you're constantly updating and modifying. So um, with that, I'll go ahead and, and move the approval. Thank you. Mr. Gannett. Thank you, Mr. Oh, President. There was, there was a it's my understanding that every entity that reviews this has signed off except one, and that's the police department. Madam Clerk, have you received anything from the police department to change my mind? We received um, communication from the police department this morning approving the application. Okay. Obviously, I was well involved in the luncheon today and didn't get that memo. <laughs> so, appreciate the comments, Larry, uh, Thank that you. you made earlier. Uh, I know that we had, t I think we agreed more often than we disagreed. Oh, for sure. And uh, you've certainly taught me a lot about the development arena. Uh, and this one here, this particular project, 
I would probably be very overtly cautious if I was back in my other life, <laughs> if something like this was coming about. Uh, I think it's going about in a sensible approach. Uh, there were a lot of people that were involved in getting it here, and there was a lot of people that had to, re a different set of eyes had to review this, that actually participated in it, as, a, as I understand it, which I think is a good thing. Uh, I would say that the goal should be, as you say, since this is a living, breathing document, regulating a living, breathing uh, establishment, establishments, if you will, uh, that we have to start somewhere, and I, I, Dr. Thompson hit it on the head, our uh, com competition, that uh, we have uh, well, not just 50 miles down the road, I think right across the river, mm -hmm. uh, if you will. Um, we need to stay with that. But we have to be cautious, and we put measures in place to make sure that um, our police aren't overburned, overburdened. Um, all, for, in other words, all first responders would not be overburdened. Our inspectors not be overburdened. It's just like when they build the place, and the architects and the engineers make sure that there's fire extinguishers and smoke detectors and all those things for public safety. I'll be keeping my fingers crossed and watching from afar uh, on how this develops, but uh, wishing it well. Thank so you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pauls. Thank you, Mr. President. Will, you come down a second? Will Acosta, Trejo, Assistant City Attorney. Uh, thank you, Will. I just want to walk through some of these uh, the steps that we did to get to the point where we're at. <clears throat> As I can recall, uh, Councilwoman uh, Melton said I went into a rant, and I'm not denying that. Uh, when I first saw the document that came in front of the law committee dealing with this uh, particular issue, and can you just sort of tell me and describe what happened after I got out of my rant? I will not disagree either. Um, <laughs> the law committee has expressed concerns about the initial application, some of the things that were provided, uh, really just a lot of questions that were uh, ambiguous, uh, things that hadn't been fully thought through, and so that's when coordination started between uh, the law department, uh, Mr. Jobin and his client, as well as the fire department, the planning department, and the police department. Uh, and that was months of back and forth uh, emails and phone calls and meetings between all of those entities before we uh, arrived at the application that you have in front of you today. Okay. <clears throat> so the one time there were issues, but right now we have the approval of all the aforementioned uh, groups. That uh, is correct. They have all, and you have met with them and also the, uh, the counterpart? Yes, sir. Okay. And there is an agreement? Correct. Okay, so uh, like say we should have, if we approve this, we should have two years before we need to revisit, if so, if we need to? Well, uh, we have two years for their um, renewal, okay. but that doesn't stop the city council or the law committee from bringing in uh, this entity at any time that it feels that there's problems. Uh, the ordinance allowed uh, the city council the ability to suspend or revoke uh, this district uh, designation, and so that is something that doesn't have to wait the two years okay. uh, should there be problems. Would you say in your terms, have we done due diligence on this? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> do you think maybe we overworked you a little bit? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you got to tell the truth, even though it's not sworn in. <laughs> no. I do think a lot of times we forget that uh, some of us, you know, we do have questions, and of course we do not have the answers, and we're searching for them. And people uh, such as yourself have stepped up and tried to make things and make the connections. And I think sometimes uh, your extra work is, sort of goes uh, unsung. And I'm also trying to send that out to the people who have questions about this. This is not something that we just today decided, yay, nay, 
there's been a lot of in-depth preparation by the uh, person or persons who are going to be operating the uh, capital district and also by the, the city. Now here's another thing because I do have friends who are outside the capital district. We have uh, right now in our, uh, we have the ability to have two of these entertainment districts. That is correct. And one would be here uh, located by uh, the, the center here. The other one would be located, could be if so chosen, at the uh, Zarbin area? Close, yes. Okay. And, but this is what they want to know. If these things, if this happens to be successful, that ordinance could change because not everybody's going to have a big uh, arena type area to be attached to. Well, but yes, the city council could change the ordinance okay. at some point. I just want, uh, they, they think sometimes that they're being at some unfair advantage. Uh, so I just thought, you know, could, you know, but uh, I'm going to conclude by again thanking you and the, the people behind you who, uh, what I call with that extra mile to make this work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Festerson. Thanks, Mr. President. I think most of my questions have been asked so far, but I wanted to thank Councilman Pauls and the Law Committee for, for asking those detailed questions because this being the first time we've gone about this, that this is important, but I do support it as well. I think uh, Dr. Thompson is right that uh, we do need to compete in this fashion with the rail yard and with the power and light district, and this is our first opportunity to do that. And the legislation, I think it's important to remind people, the legislation, that was the intent of the legislation, but also in a, in a very limited fashion. Uh, it being only 1,500 feet from a convention center or arena, there's effectively only two spots in Omaha where that is possible. Uh, and you have to go about creating a, uh, an association within that entity, uh, which you, we've done in this case, so all those things are being followed appropriately, I think. And because this is such a major investment, uh, I trust and I know uh, that their interest is to have this go well also, so uh, there's that incentive for them too. Mr. Jobin, just one question I had for you uh, that I'm not sure I quite caught when you went through the details of it, um, which, which I appreciated. I think you answered most of my questions, but remind me, how does one access the common space? Can you, are there access points or do you have to go through the business, one of the businesses to get inside there or how does that work? We can turn this back on. Okay, so just just to get uh, re reoriented here, uh, this is Capitol Avenue. This would be 10th Street over here uh, on the other side of the hotel. And then, of course, this is 12th Street. This is the vacated Davenport Street. And I, I guess I should mention that Davenport currently is vacated. Uh, and we did come up with an agreement uh, in the vacation ordinance to always keep Davenport Street open for emergency vehicles and deliveries to the Hilton. So that's something that was worked in here that we hadn't talked about either. So you can actually access the parking garages here. And so there'll, there'll be uh, a walkway that's uh, in the air at this location that connects with the retail building. So you'll be able to access the common area from that side. You'll be able to access the common area off of 12th Street here. And then you'll be able to access the common area off of Capitol Avenue here at this location and here at this location again you know with the temporary barriers being able to be moved you know either closer to Capitol or further back from Capitol depending on the event and then of course you can access the common area through the various establishments that will have uh, doorways uh, to the common area okay so there's a number of ways and, and the hotel of course also and drinking, drinking establishments or interior. Interior, right. So once you're in there, you've already, already gone right. through the wristband and the uh, gates and the security and everything. Exactly. That now, access points. some of the, if there are bars and restaurants in these two future buildings to be constructed, there may be some outdoor patio uh, opportunities along Capitol Avenue as well. But they're really, we decided that they really wouldn't be part of the common area per se, but people obviously could walk back and forth. And it's really those outdoor patio areas here would be part of the premises located in these particular buildings, okay. if that were even to occur. So the businesses um, have control of their own access points, obviously, otherwise there's, there's five access points that are common areas by which right. you'd be implementing these measures. That's right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There are no further lights. It's been moved and seconded to approve uh, item 17. Uh, roll call. Grenat. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Paul. 
Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Item 17 approved, 7 to 0. Madam Clerk, if, we, if I could deviate from the agenda just for a second. Uh, I thought I was done with uh, saying goodbye to, to folks who are not going to be with us, but uh, it is important, first of all, to acknowledge our council members who put forth significant effort for 16 years, but it's also necessary to recognize, you know, our department heads when they when, when and a lot of the work that they have done to, to keep this city afloat and to keep our council members informed. Uh, Mickey Frost's last meeting is today. Uh, she will be leaving us uh, June 2nd and um, um, wanted to first of all acknowledge uh, the work that you have done. This is Mickey's second, second trip to City Hall as a matter of fact uh, and she's the uh, Human uh, Resources Director and uh, we'd like to thank her for her service, all the work that she has done, especially with the testing procedures for police and fire and getting that in line and, and uh, very much appreciated Mickey and, and uh, we would like to Congratulate you and wish you well in your retirement. Thank you very much. And if you have any comments, you can certainly Well, I just thought I out. might avoid all this by being late, so <laughs> thank, thank, thank you. Name and address Mr. for the record, please. Um, I, I just want to thank you all for the courtesies that Name and address for the record, uh, I'm please. I'm sorry, <laughs> Mickey, Mickey Frost, Human Resource Director. Um, I could, I've been in Human Resources for a while, and I think the two things that I really tried to do um, while being HR Director is, one, stay out of the papers or the, the limelight, and I think to the, to the, for the most part, I've been successful in doing that. And, and what that means is that we've been able to handle very delicate human resource issues in the appropriate setting, at the appropriate time, and with a level of respect and privacy for our employees. And secondly, I just want to thank all the city employees. We, um, Although sometimes I have to deal with the difficult employees, for the, the most part, the vast majority of the city employees care about their job, they care about their city, they do an excellent job, they work for pay less than they would get at the private, in the private sector in very difficult circumstances, um, and sometimes they're not always appreciated. So on behalf of the city employees, thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Consent agenda. Any member of the City Council may cause any item placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed from the consent agenda shall be taken up by the City Council immediately following the consent agenda in the order in which they were removed unless otherwise provided by the City Council rules of order. The public hearing on agenda item number 17 was held on May 16, 2017. 18. 18. 18. I'm sorry, on 18. Second. Moved and seconded to approve. No further lights. Roll call. Grenat. Jerem? Yes. Melton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Item 18 approved, 7 to 0. The public hearings on agenda items numbers 19 through 28 are today. If you wish to address the City Council regarding these items, please come to the microphone, indicate the agenda item number you wish to address, identify yourself by your name, address, who you represent, and if you are a proponent or an opponent. Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Second. Moved and seconded to approve um, items numbers 19 through 28. There are no lights. Roll call. Grenat. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Items 19 through 28 approved, 7 to 0. Item 29, a special ordinance approving the Omaha Downtown Improvement District Association 2017-2018 work plan and budget. A is an amendment of the whole requested by the law department. Um, let's see, the public hearing on agenda item number 29 was held, I don't see the date here. 16th. No, on the 16th of May. Is there a motion? Second. Moved and seconded the amendment of the whole on item 29. No lights, roll call. Grenat? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Melton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Amendment of the whole for item 29 approved, 7 to 0. 
Item 30, a resolution to approve the Cambria Suites Hotel at the Yard Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Plan for a redevelopment site located at 740 North 14th Street. This public hearing on agenda item number 30 is today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon, Bridget Hadley, City Planning. If you could uh, turn on the overhead projector. Um, this particular project, the Cambria Suites Hotel at the Yard, has been vetted by the city staff and, of course, approved by the TIF committee. It will represent the completion, um, or the completion of the redevelopment of the former uh, four-acre surface parking lot that was called the Yard. And uh, so, right here, this is 15th Street, Cumming Street, 14th, and then Mike Bahey. So this rectangular shape was what was formerly called the yard, four acre site. What's highlighted in blue represents the hotel site that is before you today, the Cambria Suites Hotel. <coughs> this project is the transformation of the former surface parking lot into three separate projects, this being the third. Uh, the first was the Kiewit EIL facility that you may have recalled, uh, came before you maybe a couple of years ago. Uh, just last year was the yard apartments, that's 107. Uh, market rate apartments and now this particular project is a five five story um, uh, hotel with 128 rooms and various uh, hotel amenities it does include a 2,000 square foot uh, meeting space and 94 surface uh, parking stalls that are shared with their employees as well as the hotel guests and that would be here so Oops, before I show you that, here is the site plan. So the north is up here, Cumming Street, Mike Bahey. This is the Kiwit Training Center, and this is the site of the hotel, and this is the parking. And then this is a rendering of the Cambria Suites Hotel. And then some elevations, the west elevation the east elevation and then the north, excuse me, the north elevation and then the south elevation. Um, this particular project would involve the creation of at least 35 FTEs, um, all of course in the hospitality industry. Um, the amount of the TIF is about a little over $2.2 million and the investment at this particular site is well over $24 million in this particular uh, project site. Um, the TIF represents about 9.2% of that investment. Uh, the TIF eligible uses are range from the normal land acquisition, public improvements, site preparation, special foundations. I would note that on this particular project, if I can go back to the site plan, um, or rather at this particular site, the entire site, all three projects, uh, contributed to public improvements along 15th Street, which involved the realignment, I believe, to the south, the addition of these parking stalls um, along 15th Street, and then all the public improvements around here. So it's about a little around 100, excuse me, 1.8 million in public improvements that were involved for all three projects, and each of the three projects did contribute uh, their TIF toward that. Um, with that, I would just ask for your approval. I do know that uh, the representative of the ownership is here. If you have any specific questions, other than that, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Good afternoon. Stephen Mulkey, 10910 North 76 Plaza with the North Central States Regional Council of Carpenters. Uh, we do stand as an opponent to any type of incentive where there is no, uh, no process to ensure that wage theft and payroll fraud will occur on these projects. It's come to our attention that a drywall subcontractor may have been selected for this project. They have a long history of wage theft and payroll fraud uh, as attested by the decision in the federal district court and a current lawsuit with the U.S. Department of Labor where they had paid uh, workers' compensation premiums on a handful of individuals, yet had 45 to 60 individuals working on the project over a nine-month period. So again, uh, we, uh, we have uh, evidence suggests that payroll fraud occurs on 23 out of 24 projects that go through the 
incentive program through the council and the planning department. So again, we would ask uh, not to offer any type of incentive to projects where there is no measure or quality assurance that payroll fraud and wage theft won't occur on those projects. Thank you. Are there any other opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Um, Bridget, would you or, or anybody who's uh, related with the project, would you like to respond to the to those comments? We do have an owner's rep. We have an owner's rep here. Bridget Hadley, City Planning. I will defer to the owner's rep. Good afternoon, council members. Um, Bob Peters, 3552 Farnham Street, uh, representative of O'Reilly Hospitality uh, Management LLC, who is undertaking the project under the Omaha Hotel uh, Partners LLC. Tim O'Reilly, who had previously been here for uh, some of our early discussions and meetings, wasn't able to be here. Kristen Marquess is here today. She's the uh, chief development officer for the city, I mean, for uh, uh, O'Reilly Hospitality. And uh, in my discussions with her just now, we're not aware of the allegations. We're in obviously the very preliminary stages, even putting together the develop not only the development uh, concept, but the construction uh, contracts and, and related budgets. So I could follow up at a future time with any information. I'm not so sure that it's relative to the consideration before you today. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion? You can pass today. Or Mr. Mr. Jr. Yes. I. I just you can either or nod or a shake of the head for yes or no rather than come back down. I think what I hear you saying is, is you haven't selected a drywall contractor yet. So with regard to the statement that was made that there was one selected that would be working on the project that had these issues, would that be inaccurate? Again, uh, Bob Peters, 3552 Farnham Street. Uh, neither Kristen or I are aware of if a, if a drywall contractor has been selected, if that contract's been entered into. It's obviously, uh, if the concern expressed, would be shared by uh, O'Reilly Hospitality and the developers, and I will uh, inform them of the potential issue and be able to provide clarification, but at this point in time, we don't have any information right. that would lead us to believe that those contracts have been, in fact, put in place. But your your client would then agree to be become aware of Nebraska's misclassification laws and um, withholding laws and and agreed to abide by those. I mean, sure. those, um, that's the law of the state. So. Well, Raleigh Hospitality has you know accomplished about two point six billion dollars of construction projects from east coast to west coast most notably in the central region, south uh, to Texas, up through uh, our states. Um, they, they ha they've represented every flag imaginable. They're uh, awarded uh, ev the highest accolades in the industry for guest services, construction practices, and, w you know, out of left field, this allegation comes forward. We don't have any information that would uh, lead us to believe that that is in fact an issue with with O'Reilly Hospitality and how they've undertaken this hotel. Thank you, Mr. Peters. And 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 the opponents now have your information and they can correct reach out to you. Yeah, we'd be happy to have that conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion? Move and second to approve item 30. There are no further lights. Roll call. Garnett. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Halls. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 30 approved, 7 to 0. Item 31, a resolution to approve the contract with Graham Construction for OPW 52578 being the 132nd and Pacific Street intersection improvements project in the amount of $4,244,291. A is an amendment of the whole to award the contract to Swain Construction in the amount of four million four hundred and eighty eight thousand eight hundred and seventy dollars and sixty three cents. Item number thirty one is up for public hearing today. Are there any proponents who wish to be heard?
proponents? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Sir, are you a proponent or an opponent? I thought I was reading that it was for Graham construction in the agenda. And I it is on the agenda. Mm -hmm. For Swain. For, no, That's for a grant. That's the amendment of the whole. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm I would like it to be awarded to Graham. Okay. Name and address for the record, please. Uh Dave Rexon, one oh five eighteen N Street. Okay. And your statement is? Uh I'm here today to uh, answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Um are there any other opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing a public hearing is closed. Mr. Jerem? Thank you. I don't have any questions for you. Um, we, we covered this at the last meeting, and rather than go into a, a, a long uh, statement over what was already said, I would just incorporate those comments uh, from the last meeting here and um, advise that uh, I've since worked through this with the mayor's office, and she's comfortable with the amendment of the whole, and so I would move the amendment of the whole. Moved and seconded to uh, move the, the amendment of the whole. Mr. Falls. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, you know, after listening to our last discussion and also listening to what Chris has, uh, what I call it, dug into, shows me sometimes we do need to re-examine these decisions and really look deep into them and we find out that uh, there is an answer uh, to uh, this issue and I think this amendment of the whole is that answer. And I want to thank Chris for his efforts. Thank you. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to, uh, to approve the amendment of the whole. There are no further lights. Roll call. Kurnat? No. Jerem? Yes. Melton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? No. Mr. President? Yes. Item approved, five to two. Pursuant to City Council Rule 7F, Agenda Item 32 shall be laid over three weeks to June 13, 2017 for publication and public hearing. Pursuant to City Council Rule 7H, due to no meeting being held May 30, 2017, the third reading and public hearings on Agenda Items 33 through 37 shall be held on June 6, 2017. Pursuant to City Council Rule 7H, due to no meeting being held May 30, 2017, the third reading on Agenda Items 38 through 41 shall be held on June 6, 2017. Item 38, a special ordinance levying a special tax and assessment on all lots and pieces of real estate within Road Maintenance District 745-25 for construction and improvements. Public hearing on Agenda Item number 38 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 39, an ordinance approving a redevelopment and tax increment financing loan agreement with 3024 Harney Street, LLC to implement the NICO Building Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Plan for a project site located at 3024 Harney Street. Public hearing on agenda item number 39 is today. Proponents, please. Bridget Hadley, City Planning, here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 40, an ordinance approving a redevelopment and tax increment financing loan agreement with 2929 California Plaza, LLC, to implement the Landing Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Plan for a project site located at 2929 California Plaza. Public hearing agenda item number 40 is today. Proponents, please. Bridget Hadley, City Planning, uh, here to answer any questions you may have. And if I may just take this moment to tell council member Thompson and council member Garnett um, you have been council members for my entire career here at the city um, I didn't realize how long that had been but I definitely thank you for your service I thank you for your support of various projects thank you thank you are there any opponents who wish to be heard on item 40 seeing that public hearing is closed next item item 41 in ordinance wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry <laughs> opponent Okay. And not so much an opponent, but mainly uh, I want to name and address for the record. Please. Juan Alvarado, 2419 Charles Street. Um, and I just want to say, first of all, thank you for your service, uh, both of you that are going to be leaving today. I think uh, regardless of what decisions are made, I think you guys have the best interest of our public here. 
But um, I agree in some of the comments that I've been hearing throughout the meeting. We need to be competitive among sister and uh, um, cities. Um, we represent a lot of carpenters in town that sometimes find the need to go to other cities like Des Moines and Kansas City because of very low wages in our area. And what we do sometimes, and we don't do sometimes, the backgrounds on these projects that we fund publicly with tax increments um, is that we import a lot of uh, out-of-state hands when we do have competitive uh, construction workers on site here in Omaha. And I know the wages that are really, really low on the south side of the states that we uh, are neighbors to, we sometimes force ourselves to move up north to find a better uh, living condition and I, I really believe that we really need to mind and investigate or put a little more uh, thought on how we approve this TIF uh, money because uh, there has been a lot of uh, consequence or been a lot of proof that there's this mismanagement of our money uh, even though it doesn't affect the project physically we do pay for preparation we do pay for infrastructure with our, our, our funds and I think we need uh, we need our support with our city councilman to at least look into it <coughs> a deeper way. How this is uh, breaking the law, and it's encouraging some of these contractors not to abide by the rules that we have as a state in Nebraska. I love my state. I am an implant from Texas. We ran from that area that predominates this industry. I found a home here 23 years ago. I plan to retire here and probably have children and grandchildren here. And uh, with that, I just leave you guys. Please uh, take that in consideration. And I appreciate everything you guys do for our city. Thank you. Are there any other opponents who wish to be heard on item number 40? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 41, an ordinance declaring the necessity of acquiring private property for the construction of the Forest Lawn Creek sewer separation project. Public hearing agenda item number 41 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Pursuant to City Council Rule 7H, due to no meeting being held May 30th, 2017, the third reading and public hearings on agenda items 42 and 43 shall be held on June 13th, 2017. Pursuant to City Council Rule 7H, due to no meeting being held May 30th, 2017, the second reading and public hearings on agenda items 44 through 50 shall be held on June 6, 2017. Mr. President. Gentlemen, Mr. Mr. Grenat. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd just like to take a point of personal privilege here uh, and, and publicly thank uh, uh, Council Member Melton and all of the council members and then those in both staff, the city clerk's office and council staff's office uh, for putting together a very nice luncheon this afternoon for Franklin and I. Um, it meant a lot, uh, warmed our hearts, filled our tummies, and it's very much appreciated. Um, 32 years between the two of us, on the city council, and this, just that sign of appreciation is very touching. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I hope I alluded to that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we'll give you we'll give you the uh, we'll give you the last word to uh, uh, um, adjourn. Mr. Pre Mr. President, motion to adjourn. Second. We move to the second to adjourn. No further lights. Roll call. Grenette. <laughs> Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Paul. Yes. Thompson. Good God. <laughs> Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Absolutely. Yes. Meeting adjourned. At motion passed. Meeting adjourned at 3.34 p.m. Okay.